Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video, we're going to be tackling deriving the maximum likelihood estimators for the normal distribution, as well as looking at what the maximum likelihood estimates are, for an example. So when we're deriving the maximum likelihood estimates for the normal distribution, our assumptions are that the, our underlying data, the population, follows a normal distribution where we have xi is distributed normally with the mean of mu and the variance of sigma squared, and they are iid, they're independent and identically distributed normal random variables. But we don't actually know what the population mean is, what the population variance is. And in fact, if we have very large samples, this is very large populations, this is a very difficult thing to go and um, calculate if we have to go take the whole population and compute its mean and the whole population and compute its variance. So what we are instead going to do is we're going to sample from it and use some techniques that we're going to derive on our own. So we have a large population that we believe follows the normal distribution. So we have enough reason to believe that the population follows the normal distribution, but we don't know exactly the parameters that it takes its mean or its variance. And a typical example of this is, for example, we know that the I, a human IQ follows a normal distribution, but we don't know what the mean or the variance is in, say, a certain school or a certain country. So what we do is we sample from that country. We take a representative sample, and then we go and um, estimate the parameters from that. So our goals is that we are interested in estimating. So we want to estimate the parameters mu and sigma squared, so that's the population mean and the population variance. And to achieve this, we're going to start by taking a random sample of size n from the population. So this is the situation in which we find ourselves. We have a very large class of students and we're interested in studying the distribution of their IQ. We're going to sample n students from the population. Then we're going to derive the maximum likelihood estimators for the population mean and variance. And then lastly, this will be covered in the next video, we will use the formulas to find the maximum likelihood estimates, and we're going to do this in the R programming language. So let's get started. So this is our classroom, with these being the students seated at their desks, and we're going to be sampling from this classroom. So there we have, and we're randomly sampling, so there we have our first random sample, here our second, third, fourth, and fifth. So we've sampled five students from this classroom. Now, this is not to scale, this is just an example for illustrative purposes. We're sampling from the population, and this is the sample that we ended up with. These are our samples, and there are n individuals in the sample. That's what, what uh, we are most interested in, is we want n individuals. So now that we have obtained our sample of size n, we're interested in estimating the mean and variance of the population. And how do we do that? Now, there are many ways in which we can do that. What about sample mean? And sample variance, for example. Well, they are also estimators that are valid, but in this video, we are talking about maximum likelihood estimation. And since we're talking about it, well, what is the maximum likelihood estimators for the normal distribution? Well, that's what we're doing here. We're going to derive them. So let's remind ourselves of the normal distribution. Its probability density function is given by this equation over here. This is the PDF, probability density function, for a normal random variable. With a mean of mu and the variance of sigma squared. So it's 1 over square root 2 pi sigma squared times e to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And that's our PDF. So the log likelihood function is the product of the probability that the random variable xi, which is one of our sample, so this is one of our samples among the n samples, and we are interested in the, the product of the probabilities that xi is equal to its realization. And since the probability that xi is equal to 
lowercase xi to its realization is simply this f of x here, the probability density function. So we're going to deal with the product from 1 to n of these of the probability density function, but instead of x, we're using xi or capital xi if we're talking about the estimator, not the estimate. We notice over here in the likelihood function, we have sigma squared over here and sigma squared over here. Well, how about we make our lives a bit easier and we'll see why that's the case is we substitute theta to be equal to sigma squared. That'll make uh, taking the derivative, uh, the partial derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to sigma squared um, or respect to a parameter representing the population variance much easier. So the log likelihood function specified in terms of mu and theta is equal to the product from i is 1 to n of 1 over square root 2 pi theta times e to the negative xi minus mu squared over 2 theta. So let's simplify this product over here and we see that um, this 1 over the square root of 2 pi theta, that's the same as 2 pi theta to the power of negative a half. And since we're multiplying this n times, then we end up with 2 pi theta to the power of negative n over 2. And next we're going to multiply uh, exponents, number e, to a certain power n times. So that just becomes e to the negative 1 over 2 theta times the summation from i is equal to 1 to n of the xi minus mu squared. Since we're using capital xi to denote the estimator, not the estimates. We don't have any data yet. So this is uh, how we simplify the likelihood function. Now the next step is likelihood function is useful, but we are going to use the log likelihood function because it's far easier to go and take its derivatives because it simplifies these, um, this expression greatly. So this uh, cursive L, I'm using this to denote the log likelihood function. And that's just the log, the natural logarithm of the likelihood function of mu and theta. And we simply know that that's the natural logarithm of what we derived in the previous slide. Over here. So we're taking the natural logarithm of this. So when we simplify this, we find that, well, the first, firstly, we note that the log natural logarithm of a times b is equal to the natural logarithm of a plus the natural logarithm of b. That's the first rule. So we can split this product into the natural log logarithm of 2 pi theta to the power of negative n over 2 plus the natural logarithm of e to the negative 1 over 2 theta times the summation of xi minus mu squared. And since we have an exponent over here, we can go and multiply it out in front. So we're left with negative n over 2 times the natural logarithm of 2 pi theta minus, we're taking a natural logarithm of an exponent of e to the power of negative 1 over 2 times the summation from i is 1 to n of xi minus mu squared. So we're just left with this. The natural logarithm um, cancels out this e over here. So this gives us the natural logarithm of the normal distribution, uh, the, the log likelihood function of the normal distribution in terms of mu and theta. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and take the derivatives of this function. So we are going to take the derivative of the natural, of the log likelihood function with respect to mu, so the partial derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to mu. So we're looking at this entire equation and the only place we see a mu occur is over here. So we can ignore this term over here. So let's focus on the right hand side. Negative 1 over 2 theta is a constant with respect to mu, so we can just leave it as it is. Then we need to go and take, so this is theta, not q, theta, so negative 1 over 2 theta, times we need to take the derivative of the summation of xi minus mu squared. So the derivative, the partial derivative of this with respect to mu 
is going to be equal to two times the summation from i is equal to one to n of x i minus mu. And this leaves us with negative one over theta times the summation from i is equal to one to n of x i minus mu. And now that we have our partial derivative with respect to mu, let's go equate it to zero. Because we're attempting to find the maximum likelihood. So we want to find where this derivative of the likelihood function, we want to find where it equates to zero. So zero is equal to negative one over theta times the summation of x i minus mu. So that means that if we multiply out this negative one over theta, we're left with zero is equal to the summation of x i minus mu. And that's just equal to the summation of x i minus n mu or n x bar minus n times mu. Or if we want to be more specific, we will have n x bar minus n mu for the maximum likelihood estimator. Because estimator, we need to talk about the capital. So this is equal to zero. So what this implies, this implies that mu hat, which is the maximum likelihood estimator of the mean of the population, is equal to x bar. So the maximum likelihood estimate is going to be equal to the lowercase x bar, which is the sample mean. So that's how we derive the maximum likelihood estimator and estimate of the sample of the population mean for a normally distributed uh, population. Next, let's go and tackle the, the question of finding the maximum likelihood estimate of the population variance. So we're going to take the partial derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to theta. And we need to note that both this term as well as this one, they both have theta in them. So the partial derivative of negative n over 2 times the, LA, the natural logarithm of 2 pi times theta, that's going to be negative n over 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 pi theta multiplied by the derivative of 2 pi theta with respect to theta, which is 2 pi. So that's this, this expression solved, um, dealt with. Let's tackle this one on the right-hand side. So we see that this summation, this whole summation operator, it doesn't have a single theta in it. So it's independent of theta, as well as the negative a half. So we can bring this out, negative a half times the summation of xi minus mu squared. And next, we need to take the partial derivative of 1 over theta. So this is just theta to the power of negative 1. So its derivative is negative theta to the power of negative 2. So we're multiplying with negative 1 over theta squared. A bit of simplification, we can see that we have negative n over 2 times 1 over 2 pi theta times 2 pi. So this 2 pi and this 2 pi cancel out. So we're left with negative n over 2 theta. On the right hand side, we see that we have a negative over here and a negative over here. That means they're going to multiply out. So we have plus 1 over 2 uh, theta squared times the summation of xi minus mu squared. And this is now the partial derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to theta. So let's go and simplify it even further. Notice over here that we've already found that mu hat is equal to x bar. So we're going to go and make a substitution for mu over here. So firstly, let's rearrange this equation by equating it to zero. So equating to zero to find the point where the derivative is equal to zero, where the maximum likelihood occurs, that is n over 2 theta is equal to 1 over 2 theta squared times the summation of xi minus mu squared. So if we cancel, if we multiply out by 2 theta squared um, on the left hand side and the right hand side, we cancel this out and we cancel this and this and we're left with n theta n theta is equal to the summation of xi minus mu squared. This means that theta hat is equal to 1 over n times the summation of xi minus mu 
squared, but we already derived mu hat to be equal to x bar. So this is equal to 1 over n times the summation of xi minus x bar squared. So we have found that theta hat is equal to 1 over n times the summation of xi minus mu squared, which is equal to 1 over n times the summation of xi minus x bar squared. And what we're going to do then is we, we can say that um, we know that theta is equal to sigma squared. We need to go substitute back because we're interested in the parameterization of sigma squared. So sigma squared hat is equal to 1 over n times the summation of xi minus x bar squared for the maximum likelihood estimator. And for the maximum likelihood estimate, estimate we have we're going to use the lowercase values. That's 1 over n times the summation of xi minus x bar squared.